Oh, I'm rolling. Oh. Sorry. Sick, babe. Uh, anyways, today I'm out here with a couple buddies. Got Bailey on the camera. Got my buddy Jordan right there rocking the M81 kit. Um, and we're testing out the SKS, the last piece to the puzzle. Um, the uh, Mag Wedge Quick Rail, uh, I think it's Gen 3.1 where it allows stripper clips to actually be fed into your magazines if you have something, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'll talk about it off screen, but we're gonna shoot with it. So uh, I tested it, I zeroed it for the best part. It doesn't have to be the best. Um, this isn't a precision rifle, but my buddy Jordan verified it. It could probably go up a couple more, but you know, for 25 yards, a little old 7.62 by 39, it's good enough, but all we are gotta check is see if this drifts. So let's go have some fun and toss it. That the zero is just a little low, uh, but it's grouping decently. So, besides dropping it on itself, we're also going to hit it with a hammer. Jordan, would you do the honors of hitting my SKS? Dude, smack it a little bit more. All right, that should probably at least somewhat knock the zero out, right? So, we'll test the zero. All ammo is sponsored by who, Jordan? DNR Sports Center. <laughs> well, I paid. I paid for the ammo there. Anyways, we're going to shoot uh, three rounds top left of the 25 and just see if that changes the zero at all. And mind you, I am not a precision shooter, nor do I practice this, so it also could be me. There we go, there's three shots. Let's go check it out. Cool. So, here's our first, here's first initial three, next initial three, and the last three. And then this is Jordan's verifying. And now this is me with that. So that's kind of shooting about the same. Might be shooting a little left, but we'll verify again on this. So it's doing pretty good so far, at least. It's not like you're going to be fighting in World War III with this shit. <laughs> so here we got my bud, uh, Jordan. He's going to verify shooting the 25-yard paper at the bottom right target, um, just to make sure that it's not me that's shooting poorly. And remember, top of the chevron is where you want to put the target. Yeah, uh, with that little bit of abuse, I think they'll handle at least hunting trips, especially for you Canucks up there. Um, rip, uh, sorry, you can't have pistols anymore. But you know what's better than just shooting 25 yards away? That. So in these next couple of clips, we're going to be testing the uh, stripper press, clips press. and just having some fun go. with the rifle. Press, press, press. It gets stiff. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Might be full. It, it could be. Oh. Talking about me, I'm yeah. getting stiff right now. Oh, oh you're dead. I'm always stiff around you. There we go. Bang, bang. Yeah. Filming? Filming. Cool. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Now the reason why the uh, stripper clips are failing to load here is most definitely the mags and not the uh, rail Let's itself. Work. Yours work. Okay. Okay, that's not working. Why you no work? It's so hard. You see, there's no hole for the film to go. Ah, good enough. Stab that This time I actually put some oomph into it.
see if it will do it. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. So now that we're back here um, after the shooting in the range day and a little bit of abuse to this guy, what are my final thoughts? Well, pros, it's relatively cheap for what it is. Um, it's quality made for the most part. Um, and it fits a three times scope on here and most likely would fit an LPVO as well. Although I don't have an LPVO to test that. Um, it's solid, it's made out of all aluminum it, and it's just pretty good. Um, Cons, uh, only a couple cons. Um, one, as you saw, I had to mill out all of that uh, stripper clip. So I, just so that the stripper clips could feed properly. Um, and with those mag, it's the reason why those were failing to feed the best was because of those mags. Um, you have to kind of mod them sometimes. So that's not on this, but uh, in this, in these few pictures here, you can see that I did actually have to um, drill this out or mill this out because it just wouldn't fit. Um, next, who's gonna put a light there? Uh, that's just kind of a dumb design. I think it makes the cost even more expensive. You have this up here and you might be saying, Mike, where's the light that you put on this? Well, it fell off because <laughs> it was a cheap $20 Amazon lights that is mostly meant for airsoft. Um, I don't even think it could handle that though. So. Overall, do I recommend this product for you Canucks? Yes, um, especially if you are trying to more modernize your SKS. Um, I think this is a good product for you. It is niche, um, but the price for it is, I think, worth it, um, especially since you can use stripper clips, which I'm pretty sure in Canada you can't have detachable box magazines, or maybe you can, you can but only like for five rounds. So that's that's pretty much what my thoughts are. I don't think it was a bad product. I just think maybe take out a couple, maybe just uh, cut this back another notch and then elongate the uh, uh, little thing that they put in there. I forget what they call it, but I didn't buy one because I didn't feel like testing it. So there you go. That is the Magwedge Quick Rail um, Gen 3.1 review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more Tom Foolery, subscribe to my channel, comment down below what you want to see next. I'm thinking we do an ARX, possibly, pistol, or maybe do some stuff with my trap door. I think that'd be fun. Let me know what you want to know, and I'll catch you on the flip side.